How's it going, everyone? Uh, hopefully this is working well. This is the first live stream on the second channel. Uh, I want to talk about some different stocks, but um, I'll just let everyone kind of filter in here. We're still a few minutes early. Uh, oh, we are a few minutes early. If you guys want to know anything, maybe we wouldn't uh, we want to talk about in the normal live streams or anything, like anything about YouTube or um, anything like that, or uh, I don't know. Whatever you guys want to talk about, we're we're going to be a smaller live stream than usual since it is the second channel. Uh, we're not going to have 50,000 people skip, pull up on their feed like uh, we usually do. How's it going, Samuel and Finance AP? Good to see you both in here. Thanks for joining. Man, I have to say, the stock market today is down, uh, the general stock market. But I love when we have days like this where – like, I don't know, like almost my entire portfolio in Weeble is up huge today. Like uh, we have four stocks that are down and they're down just there are five stocks and they're all down 1.3% or less. And then we have BFT, which is up 5%. We have MP materials, which is up 7%. Uh, GHIV up three and a half percent. A Neo up 4%, Tattoo Chef up 11 SPCE up 5 Thunderbridge Acquisition up 5 Clean Spark up 13 which is up like 8 or 9% since I bought it this morning. Fubo up 25 Switchback up 6%. It's a good day. What's my favorite SPAC? Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, if I... If I had to say it right now, I probably would say something without remembering all the different specs because there are so many. I still really like SBE or ChargePoint long-term. I think ChargePoint is still not as expensive as it could be when you're thinking about 20 or 25 or 2030. Now, a lot of the people that are investing in these specs, though, aren't really looking for five or 10 years down the line. So I think that's why we haven't seen it quite push up as much as we have some other stocks recently just because you know it's already pretty expensive um and just so you guys know i'm just looking at my phone down here at the at my stocks um but i think once the market gets a little bit more normal and we aren't seeing you know a normal day being up 10 percent in a spec uh, once we start to see no normal numbers i think we'll probably see sbe move up more than general market I think it will still be a really good one to hold long term. Should you buy some bank stocks? Well, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't say that you should or shouldn't. But I do like bank stocks. First of all, a lot of them offer a really good dividend yield. Second of all, depending on which ones you buy, there's a lot of security in them, like JP Morgan, like Bank of America. I like JP Morgan the most. Now, I worked at a regional bank for a long time, and those you can sometimes get undervalued where – People just aren't pricing in uh, the growth of the company and pricing in the fact that, yeah, we have low interest rates right now. Like the old bank that I worked for was Comerica Bank, and they paid like an 8% dividend at, uh, at some points throughout the year, and they fell down 70% or something like that. But they their balance sheet was good enough that it wasn't really a risk for them. And they also have a lot of variable interest rate loans which is bad short term, but uh, the fact that they were still profitable throughout the pandemic means that you know once they actually do raise interest rates, that's going to be awesome for the company. Um, I'm guessing it's going to go a lot because we, Comerica Bank in general, was up at like a hundred dollars a share. It had gone up a hundred or something percent in about a year, and then it fell down to about thirty. And I was still buying then. Hi, Eric. Nice to see you. Yeah. Finance. It is crazy how the market's down, but oh, sorry, geez, <laughs> uh, almost dropped a new iPhone. That was that was a close one. Um, uh, but yeah, a lot of the of the companies we've been investing in have done quite well. Young investor, nice to see you on here. Um, any advice for a twelve-year-old investor and YouTuber? So. As a YouTuber, I'd say just keep on making content, keep on making content that you like. I think it's tough to be a young investor 
uh, in YouTube because a lot of people your age just aren't looking at the stock market. They don't really care as much about the stock market because a lot of it's over their head. And a lot of you know, middle schoolers just aren't thinking about uh, investing yet. But I think maybe transitioning, I've seen a lot of channels do really well with like business because a lot of people want to make money, like make money at school or um, stuff like how I made this amount of money as a 12 year old, stuff like that. Or like best, best businesses to start as a 12 year old to make a lot of money or something like that. Those channels seem to do really well. Um, as an investor, you could either go the index route and not have to worry about your investments and just focus on making more money because that will probably do a lot more for you right now. Whether you make $10 an hour or $5 an hour does a lot more than you know picking a good stock. Um, unless you're able to pick like the one in a hundred stock or something that goes up 10 to 20 X, but, or one in a thousand, they're probably not that likely uh, one in a hundred, but um, you could go one of those two routes. I think at your age and with how much you probably get paid because, you know, 12 to 20 year olds don't get paid that well, or at least 12 to 18, I should say, uh, before you are an adult, you usually don't get paid that well. So I would really focus on building up your audience on YouTube or making money on the side and then uh, putting it all probably in a Roth IRA. Of course, this isn't uh, tax advice or anything like that, but you're probably barely getting taxed anything if you are being taxed anything. And with how much you're making, you could probably put it all into a Roth IRA unless you're making more than 6000 a year. What's my price target on Tattooed Chef? Uh, I think I broke it down in the video. Uh, it's hard to remember since... I do a lot of videos, uh, keeping the price target in my mind without like looking back at the numbers, but I think it still has a significant upside, like a hundred plus percent in the next few years. And I, I give those price targets and it sounds crazy, right? It sounds like a hundred percent a year. You just say that in every video, but a lot of the companies do that. I mean, a lot of the companies have been going up a hundred percent, uh, just like FUBA went up 75% in a week or two. Uh, but overall, I think that, you know, we could see that because it is such a high growth stock. Lincoln, I appreciate it. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you've been feeling like you got a lot of good out of it and that you've gotten some, uh, some good stuff out of the Patreon group too, it looks like. Eric, uh, how I find SPACs ahead of time. Part of it, honestly, and this isn't a plug for Patreon, but a lot of it is the Patreon. Like a lot of people are talking about SPACs all the time. Also, am subscribed to something called SPAC Insider. They're not an affiliate or anything like that, but I do find it useful because they have, like, they update it with all the new SPACs, all the new information. I don't go on there all that often, but it is helpful when I do go on there. Uh, usually, I. I go on there maybe once or twice a week, not all the time. And then a lot of it's just from YouTube. Like a lot of people just talk about SPACs, but I think we're probably ahead of most people when we talk about SPACs. So yeah, a lot of it's from the comment section of my videos because a lot of people are like, oh, you need to check out this stock or something. The harder thing not is not finding the stocks, but weeding through what are worth looking at because I have probably 50 people a day telling me to take a look at a stock. Mo, I'm glad you... Uh, Glad you like it, man. Thanks. Young investor, you're up big today. Nice. Yeah, I think I'm up. It's hard to tell in Weeble how much you're up. Honestly, like a lot of other trading platforms just show you like, oh, this percent up. But for some reason, maybe it's just because I've been running a lot of deposits in there. It's not very intuitive to figure out how much I'm up, but I've got to think it's close to 10% today, uh, probably six to 10%, something like that. Young investor, you blew up on Twitter. How can you convert some of those followers, followers to YouTube videos? Uh, I think it's difficult to do that. I think it's easier to convert people from YouTube to other, to other platforms compared to convert them from something else over to YouTube just because YouTube is a lot more interactive. Like It takes a lot more to watch a YouTube video than it does just to have someone on your feed and scroll past them. Um, I would probably try to plug the YouTube channel though more often if you, if you don't do that already. All fruity. I have not looked at ALPP. Um, I'm not sure what that is exactly. And finance. I'm 25 years old. 
Uh, you're up 85% stocks, been playing the game for five months. I'm in SPAC's growth. Nice. Yeah. The SPAC market has just been insane. I keep on waiting for a pullback, but it has not really happened. I mean, we've seen a couple small ones, like less than a week, the, the market would pull back. But generally, just the stock market in general has been going insane. And I think there's something else that's coming up too that will cause it to keep going. But I think we've seen a lot of people have seen that they're planning on stimulus checks soon, like maybe in next month or two. They, they're planning on passing the bill soon. Um, so I think we'll see a lot of money go in the market. A lot of people will be looking at what stocks are people talking about. They'll be looking at Webull, Robinhood, what stocks have gone up 100%. A lot of people that are new to investing probably are just going to throw money in whatever has been going up a lot. A lot of people will probably be thrown in Tesla. A lot of people will be thrown it into the big names. So if there's some more news that comes out, if more people figure out, okay, like they think that SPACs can't go down, which they really don't go down under $10, uh, barely ever. But if people start figuring that out and they're like, oh, this spec just, uh, just, filed for its IPO. It's $10 and 20 cents. I can't lose. And then they just start buying like all, all these random SPACs. I think that could push the SPAC market even further up. Enrico, nice to see you. I'm glad to see that you're from Sweden. It's always cool um, to see people from other countries join in. You guys would be probably surprised with how many people are international. I think we're about 50 to 55% American and then 40 five percent outside of america which is cool lone raven yeah uh <laughs> i look like i'm fresh out of college i sometimes i get that sometimes people say i look like i'm 40 um i'm not sure what it is maybe it's because my hair's thinning a little bit right there i don't know uh i actually so i i'm trying to think of how i can say this well i'm not monetized i think i had coronavirus last year and it's going to sound crazy. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but if you remember, at least by me, the flu was horrible last year, like in late November, early December. And, and I think I had it then. And I, I realize that sounds a little bit like a conspiracy theory because we weren't supposed to have had it until early this year, but I had every single symptom that is a classic symptom of COVID. And there aren't many does, or there aren't many uh, sicknesses that cause you to lose your taste like completely. Like I, I thought it was weird at the time because yeah, you get like, you don't taste as much because your nose is stuffed up a lot of the time when you're sick. But I had no sense of taste. Like I like sweets a lot. I like coffee a lot. I didn't drink either of those or I didn't drink coffee. I didn't eat sweets at all because everything tasted like nothing to me. So I was literally eating vegetables and fruit the whole time had no hunger at all. I lost 15 pounds in two weeks at 103 degree fever for literally 10 days straight. I've never had a fever that long. I kept on thinking it would just, I passed it, didn't happen. Walk upstairs, just be out of breath, like have to stop halfway up the stairs, just sleep or not even sleep all day because I couldn't sleep because I got pneumonia. I was sleeping like 15 minutes. So anyways, I don't even remember how that started, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it's crazy. Um, I apologize because I have no idea where I started, why I started on that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Looking to grow generation. It's a 10 bagger. Okay. Gig Capital 3 merging with Lightning Esports. I haven't taken a look at that one in a while. Um, I did a video on it before though. Gig Capital 3 merging with Lightning Emotors. Uh, well, that's why I just talked about. Do I think uh, QS is overvalued it's tough it seems like a lot of stocks are overvalued but i honestly kind of missed the boat on that one i saw that it was up a lot and i thought why even like why even do my due diligence and i just kept on going up i saw some other stocks though that had some good opportunity so i was i was um cautious or i was cautious about spending my time in places i didn't think the value was there um, now i remember why i was talking about COVID because of my hair after after COVID, my hair literally started to fall out. I think it was, my doctor said it was because of all the stress put on my body, but I don't know. Uh, I pocked the moon. Nice. Hopefully. Um, you're from Mexico. Cool. Cool. Finance AP in Canada. Nice. Dubai, Sweden, Sweden, man. Sydney, Australia. I like it.
and young investors in the UK. Nice. I like it. SPACs are taking over my portfolio. Me too. It's funny. I, I want to stop buying so many SPACs because it's honestly hard to keep up with them because first of all, there's so much information on them. Like there's just news all the time on them. Like every week the stock goes up 20% or down 20%. And then you have to figure out whether you want to sell it or stuff like that. And then you have to keep up with the dates. And it's hard to keep up with like 15 different SPACs, especially when you're looking at new companies and you're looking at your old companies. I've been trying not to buy more, but there are so many opportunities in these. I mean, you see them regularly go from 11 to $13, 11 to $12, 11 to 14. And it sounds like not that big a deal because, you know, 11 to $13 isn't that much, but it's 20%. And it's usually happening in a few weeks or a month or something. So it's easy to let those take over your portfolio. I unloaded about five SPACs a week ago or so, uh, which helped a little bit. Smith Micro, nice. What do I think about SPC after Chamath sold loads of stock and test flight failures? It makes it difficult to want to buy more. Uh, I'm still invested in it, but I see that as one of those plays where I'm just going to hold it. I don't have enough to, like, I have enough that it would suck. It would, it would suck, but the risk reward I still think is decent there. I'll probably just hold on to it unless I see something where I just need to unload a position to buy something else, but I still think we'll see large up and down days. Um, so I'm just holding that for the long term growth. Hopefully it does well. BFT and APXT are mains nice. Yeah, finance every day. I see a million specs too. It's kind of crazy. Erdem Greens from Germany. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Best growth ETF to invest in right now. So I did a video on Bill Ackman's ETF. I don't really like it that much. Very high expenses. Um, very blue chip companies. I'd say ARK is probably the best way to go for an ETF. I could see a, a massive pullback for ARK if there's like another uh, pandemic or something like that. Some issue because... Honestly, it is really expensive compared to where it's been. And there are so many growth companies that if we see some type of pullback in the tech sector, it could go down, but it seems it's, it's, it's just killing it. Uh, it's, it's gone up so much this year. Yeah. 11 to 13, then back to 11. Yeah. Yeah. You could get a very solid 20% if you just bought SPACs. And you just sold them as soon as they were up 20%. You'd lose out on a lot of upside, but you could be pretty safe, I think, if you just bought a ton of SPACs. There is a new SPAC ETF. I forgot the name of it. You can probably look it up because it was, it came up on my Webull account today um, under one of the SPACs I was looking at. I was looking at WPF, I want to say the ticker is. It's a company that I made a video about this weekend, uh, a cloud SPAC or at least they're talking with a cloud company. And uh, yeah, it came up. There's a new SPAC ETF if you want to check it out. I haven't looked at the expense ratio though, so I'd be careful of that. But I think BFT is one of their bigger holdings. What's my SPCE average? Well, that's tough because I moved it over from... So it reset my average. That's one thing that I like a lot of investing apps do that and I really don't like it. They always reset your your cost basis. But when I moved it into this portfolio, it was 2282. So I'm up about 10%. I think it was, I think it was below 20 though, before I transferred it over. Thoughts on CRISPR. So this is pulling back the curtain a little bit, but I studied medicine in college. I talked about CRISPR. I talked about CRISPR technology when I was a junior or sophomore in college. So I talked about it what was that five years ago, something like that, four or five years ago. And I wish I would have just invested all my, all my uh, student loan money, all the money that I took for student loans, um, just in CRISPR and didn't even go to college. That would have been awesome because that stock has gone up a lot. Um, I don't obviously use my college degree now that, because I studied uh, medicine, but it, it, I like the technology overall. I think it's one of those companies where it's doing something that's so great for the general mankind 
that I think it will continue to push up over time. I think people want to see it win, but I haven't looked into the individual company in a while. I think I did a video on it before. I know that I talked about it in a video. You holding, am I holding BFT? Yep. I, I've been holding BFT the whole time. I think, I don't remember what I'm up right now. I think 10, 20, 10 or 15%. Kathy Woods is awesome. Uh, Shopify. So Shopify is a tough one because it's been up so much. It's one of those companies I looked into before I, before I matured a little bit as an investor and was willing to invest in companies that were highly valued. I mean, I, I actually sold out of Amazon. So this is, this is pretty early on into my individual investing. Amazon was one of the stocks that I bought during the pandemic. It went up. I don't know, 40% or something. And at the time I just saw so many other opportunities and I'm sure that I reinvested that into some really good companies because my portfolio has done really well, but I sold out of Amazon because I thought it was overvalued. Now it's up, I don't know, probably like 50% since then. So uh, that tells you kind of, that's not nearly as like overvalued as Shopify. It's still up a lot, but uh, Shopify trades very expensively. But if you're looking down the line, I think it's good. I've never used Shopify products. I know financial education has talked about it a good amount, but I haven't really looked into it in depth. Okay, the new SPAC ETF is SPCX. My girlfriend does not invest in stocks like I do. So she is not as... I don't want to say financially literate, but that is true. Cause I mean, I, I know a pretty good amount about stocks, but um, she doesn't like finance as much as I do. I've liked, like, I generally just like finance before the YouTube channel. I watched finance YouTube videos, like uh, in all my free time, I just really like it. I like the growth aspect. I've always been someone that would work really hard, even when there's nothing to work for, like, like exercise, right? If you're not preparing for like a game or anything like that, why would you put yourself through like really rigorous exercise? Well, you do it because you like it. You do it because it's good for you. It gives you the opportunity to do things in the future that you might not be able to do today. And that's kind of how I saw finance. Like I don't need $10 million. I don't have that either, but I don't need that. But like I wanted to get up to the point where I was financially independent, even if I still wanted to work just because I thought that would give me extra options. So she's not quite like that. She's um, a little, she has more anxiety about that kind of stuff than I do. So I like, I can weigh risk reward very analytically and she's not necessarily that way. Appreciate it. Options tempo. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, I, John, I am very happy. I went full-time on YouTube. It's, it's, very different. You, you talk about getting, giving up regular pay versus um, uh, like giving up regular pay and then maybe getting paid more. Uh, when I, when I gave up my day job, I really liked, like, like I, I liked the people I worked with, but it was starting to get to that point where I was like, Oh man, I, I want to be at home. Cause there's a video that I can make right now that I think could do really well. I also realized like when I make a video on YouTube, Yes, I get paid for it right up front. I get paid for uh, like referrals and stuff like that. But the building on itself is amazing. So, I mean, let's say I gain 100 subscribers and 30% of them watch every video or like uh, 30% of the videos I put out that 100 people watch. Like, just think about that. Every day I make multiple videos, 30% or 30 people watch a day, one cent a view, that's 30 cents extra a day. And that's just on one video. And then it just compounds and compounds. Uh, I felt weird when I left because I was giving up something that was such easy money. Like my job was, it paid pretty well. I mean, depending on who you are, I guess. It paid like 45000 to $50,000 a year, but had really good benefits, had a pension, had a matching 401k. So like at 25, that's not too bad to get paid 50000 from a job. Um, and I was good at it. I could have probably moved up to a manager position in a year or something or a year or two years, but I just didn't like it. Like I like YouTube. And I mean, I'm making more than I would from any job 
short of maybe investment banking uh, uh, in finance, probably. Um, yeah, so I don't know. It, it's been different, but I really like it so far. What do I think about ABT or AMCI? I've not looked at it. Um, five favorite holdings, Raphael. I did a video today on them. Uh, so these are my five that I plan on investing a lot in soon because I have I have to lower my income for this year because I wasn't expecting to make that much like this last month of YouTube. So I, I'm going to put in a lot of money into a solo 401k. So I've been trying to figure out which stocks I want to invest in. Disney, JPM, uh, Disney and JP Morgan Chase, two ones that are pretty stable that I think are just going to be mammoths in the future. I mean, there are really big companies now, but I like what they're doing. I think that they're kind of cutting edge for being like as old as they are and as big as they are. And also Tattooed Chef for growth. I think that's a really good one. Uh, also, I'm blanking on a couple of them. Um, Spark, that was after I did the, <clears throat> I, I did that video afterwards. So I wasn't really looking into that as much fubo tv is another one that i wanted to buy a lot of but it's up so much today i don't know if i will buy it a lot more um if if it keeps on going up like this like <clears throat> like i'm up 82 percent on it uh also there's one more something uh but i can't remember it off the top of my head right now i think if clean spark stays around where it is now, I'll probably buy more of it. Even though it's up 10% since I bought it earlier today, I like it. I like the fact that they're mining Bitcoin because I don't own Bitcoin now, but uh, shout out. First of all, please hit the like button. We're at 17, but we're watch we have 74 people watching. And then shout out to BlockFi because uh, I'm an affiliate of them recently. I don't own Bitcoin, but I plan on investing in stable coin soon. So if you don't know what stable coin is, it's essentially just tied to the US dollar. So the real risk in stable coin isn't that the price goes up and down like Bitcoin or something else like that. It's more like the 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 actual coin or the company issuing the coin. Uh, th that's more the risk, but it it's pretty it's pretty low risk in my mind. So they BlockFi, the company that I work with now, it's down in the description. They give you up to 8.6% on your stable coin. So in my mind, I'm going to put uh, half my emergency fund or maybe more. I might put more of it in there and it literally will just compound monthly. Uh, and it's at 8.6% APY. So if I put 10 grand in there, I get $860 in interest literally 860 times better than like JP Morgan pays me or my own bank that I used to work for pays me. Uh, you can get like, you can get probably one and a half percent on some online bank accounts. I actually was setting up a bank account that was 3%, but I had to like do all this funky stuff and it was up to a hundred thousand. I could get 3% on, but I think I'm just going to move some money to block five, uh, I already have some money there, but I'm going to move more soon uh, and just get that 8.6% interest. Of course, there is some risk. It's not FDIC insured, but uh, it, it's considered one of the best companies in that space. So I think the risk reward is good. What do I think of THCB? I think I've done a video on that one too. I apologize because a lot of these blend together. John, that's a good idea. So John says he is, uh, this is a video idea. He has young kids. What's the best stocks to invest in now to cash in after 15 years? So I really want to do a video. I might actually do it on the second channel. So the second channel isn't monetized right now. And the reason for the second channel is just that I can post videos that wouldn't do well on my normal channel and I can post them here. So with the main channel, uh, if I do poorly too many times, I think it messes with how much YouTube will push my videos out. So I try to put in videos that I think will do really well and appeal to a wide audience. Like a lot of people like, oh, this stock's going to explode. And then, you know, if it does explode, that's awesome. Uh, those do really well. 
However, videos about like best stocks to invest in over the next 20 years, people don't typically watch as much. But I've been thinking about doing this for a while. Uh, one of the best things I think parents can do for their kids, if they have the means to do so, is to hire them. And by that, I mean, you can literally hire children for or kids, small adults for certain jobs, at least as I understand it. My, my parents did some of this for me, but it's going to be a little bit different. You can hire them. And as long as you pay them a reasonable wage, you can have them have taxable income, which is awesome for you because you can get them to do things that you don't want to do, like cleaning an office, or maybe you have a website and then you hire them to be a model or something like that. You have to pay them a reasonable wage. So maybe $20 an hour if they're a model or you know, $10, $15 an hour if they're cleaning, something like that. And you get to write it off on your taxes. You're essentially just moving the money to someone else in your family, especially if you're going to set up like a, like some kind of savings account for them anyways, where you put money in it. Um, you're already going to move the money to them, right? So you can lower your taxable income, give them taxable income, but they're not going to really be taxed, right? They'll be in the lowest tax bracket possible. And because they have taxable income, you can put that in a Roth IRA. So of course, this isn't, this isn't like the stocks to buy for them, but you can, you can put the money in a Roth IRA. They'll never be taxed on it, especially if they're like really young. Let's say they're five. They could have 55 years before they're 60 to put money in there. And then they can also take out whatever's put in there. Uh, you can't take out the gains, but you can take out what's put in there. So probably a long-winded expl explanation for what I've been thinking about. But I think that's genius. I want to do that for my kids. I don't have kids. But uh, giving them taxable income, let's say they make three grand a year from zero to 10 by modeling or something like that. I just, heck, I'll just set up a website and pay them to do it. I'll, uh, maybe I can just lose money on it every year and then give them taxable income. Uh, and then, you know, stocks to invest in over the, over the next 20 years, I would say they would probably would want stocks that are going to be good growth, but also not ones that you have to check in all the time because you don't want to have to be selling and buying from like five different portfolios. So I probably, I like Disney. I think that's probably a good one along with some other ones that you see growing over the next 10, 20 years. If I had a thousand dollars, which stock would I invest in right now? So let's say I only can invest in one stock because it'd be too easy just to pull you just with a thousand dollars. That's tough. I think if I only had a thousand dollars, I wouldn't want to do anything super risky um, unless I could get more money in there. Uh, I would probably go with Disney. Disney's my favorite stock right now. I've, I've liked them for a while, but the fact that they're growing so quickly yeah, they're more expensive than they were, but I still see them doubling here. I still see them going up to 300, 350. Uh, so I heard rumors that THCV was going to deliver batteries to Tesla, but I don't know if those are any more than rumors right now. Look into PRLB. They're a 3D printing and injection molding company. Interesting. So kind of similar to NNDM, maybe. Young investor, you sold Workhorse. That's kind of that's kind of what I was thinking too. Like Workhorse was kind of stagnant. It was tough because this is going to sound weird, but when you make videos on YouTube, it kind of changes how you invest a little bit. Like you try not to let it change. But I knew like as soon as I sold Workhorse, a lot of people were going to be pissed at me. But, you know, I still sold it because that was the right decision. It was just, you know, uh, my channel blew up from maybe a couple thousand subscribers up to 15 or 20,000. And a lot of that was from Workhorse. So it was weird selling it, but I just didn't like the fact that it was so stagnant. I didn't like all the negative stuff that kept on coming out. And I kept on making sense of it until they pushed back the contract. And then I realized, okay, they can push it back again and again and again. I didn't want to continue to hold it after they had, this was, I think the third time that they pushed back the USPS contract. I felt, I knew that it would drop right after that happened, but I also felt like it was going to be stagnant after that. So I sold out, I saved myself. I think it dropped, I don't know, 10 or 20% after I sold out and I was still up 10% of my position. So young investor, I was feeling the same way. 
And with all the SPACs right then too, maybe if it was like a year earlier, I wouldn't have done that necessarily because the stock market was a lot more boring last year than it is this year. You don't, you, you constantly see stocks that are up 30% a day, 20% a day. And this is going to sound bad because I hate saying this because it makes me a little bit worried, but it's almost easy to put, pick out some of these stocks now. And sorry, I just need to plug this in, but it makes me a little bit cautious to say that because that seems, seems like a definite sign there for a second, but it makes me a little bit worried to say that, but I also realize that there is risk to it. I'm, I'm diversifying by owning a lot of different companies. Like I still hold a lot of different companies. Um, so that helps a little bit, but yeah, I just don't want to be stagnant with that either with uh, workhorse too long. Is Fubo a good one to buy today? So let me pull up my phone here for no, it was up a lot more. It's up 28% today. Uh, so if you want to buy Fubo because it's up 28%, it's not a good time to buy. The reason for that is because you're buying it because it's up. Now, if you're buying Fubo because you hadn't heard about it before today and you still think it's valued at a good value, then I would say go ahead and buy, right? You just didn't know about it. If you want to buy it still where it is now, I think that makes sense. But if you're buying it because it's up 28%, I don't think you should be chasing stocks that are just up a lot on the day that you're looking just because that that's probably not a good thing to do long-term. But I still like Fubo. Like I'm not selling it now, even though it's up to 50 because I still realize it could move up a lot over the coming years. But I could also we could also see a massive pullback tomorrow or the next day or the next day. What do I think about HCAC? So this is one that I I did make a video on it or a couple of videos on it. And I actually sold out my position. I forgot how much I was up. I think it was above 50%, maybe like 60%. And this is just me trying to remember. I don't remember exactly what I was up, but I think I bought it around 11 and then maybe I sold it around 17 or 18 or something like that. Um, I a lot of other EV stocks. And I apologize. It looks like my computer keeps freezing. Um, but it just reminds me of a lot of other electric stocks, electric vehicle stocks. And I just didn't want to hold on. To it. I held too many EV stocks. I'm trying to diversify into other, other sectors. Um, Long term, it might be good though. It's just that there are a lot of different EV stocks right now. What do I think about GHIF? So I think... So I own, do I own that? Mm -hmm. I own DHIV. I think that's maybe what you're talking about. It's a SPAC that pays a dividend. I do own it. I don't have a ton in it. I'm actually down 4% or 3.5%. Um, but, you know, I, I think it might be a good play long-term. Planet 13. Yeah, I like Planet 13 a lot. Are they up today? I haven't looked. Um, they might be down. I think a lot of stocks um, outside of my Weeble portfolio were actually down. Oh, no, up 3%. So, yeah, not too bad. It's funny. I go to my M1 portfolio, a lot of long-term stocks, and about half, about 90% of them are down. And then I go over to my Weeble one, which are all these SPACs and high-growth stocks, and it's up like 10%. CGRO or GGRO. Let me pull that one up. I, I know I know it. I think I just also did a recent video on it. I forget who they're merging with. Collective Growth Corp. Okay. Yeah, so that's the LIDAR company. Uh, possibly good. Um. I don't know how profitable LIDAR will be in the future. I think pretty profitable. Uh, the, the other stock laser has gone up a lot. Um, might be good though. Best back to buy it right now. Uh, let me pull up my stock chart here. I might've already answered this question earlier. So I like WPF just because it's low downside right now. Um, same thing with, THBR, but 
Let's see. I, I like SBE the most of all of them. Um, the other ones are just, I just like them because they're in an interesting sector and they're low cost right now. SBE though, long uh, for a long term. I do like Disney at today's price. So I've liked it all the way along. I still like it now because of their future growth. So many people um, are not pricing in all the future growth of the company. I mean, take a look at that company compared to Netflix and take a look at their price to sales ratio. Disney is about half the price to sales ratio as Netflix. And it's because they still have parks. It's because a lot of people still view them as a hospitality business, but they're growing so quickly. They're going to have their whole Disney park system. They're going to have the Disney IP and they're going to be close to the same size as Netflix in a few years, if I'm right. So I think a lot of people will probably uh, start jumping on here soon. As soon as like the next quarter comes around, if they have another good quarter of, of subscriber growth, man, I, I'd look out for that one. It might be, I think it'll be too late by then or maybe not too late because I still see them growing pretty well after that, but I could see them going up another 20% in a day, 25% a day. <clears throat> MDLV. Okay. I'll take a look at it. Um, yeah. So M John, there was some lag earlier. I saw my screen freeze up for a second. Okay. He was going to let, uh, Musk said that he was going to allow cars from other EV manufacturers to use the superchargers. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that could have an effect on SBE long-term. <clears throat> I haven't looked, I haven't seen that. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Luckily I have Tesla and SBE. So kind of a nice, uh, nice little mix there. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I haven't heard about CD Project, Michael. <clears throat> AMCI. Uh, SSPK, I haven't looked at. Asana, I haven't looked at either. The new bill is tripping you out. Huh. Is that for the delisting of Chinese companies that you're talking about, Kyle? You think a lot of people are going to cancel after the Mandalorian? Yeah, that could be true. But the thing is, um, they are planning on putting a lot more content out there. I think last, like two weeks ago, they said that they're going to come out with a hundred new series or something like that, which is a lot. I mean, they're going to put more money in Disney Plus than they've ever put before. And yeah, like I think a lot of people thought they were going to cancel after the last Mandalorian, uh, but they still have 90 million subscribers. So yeah, it could happen, but I think they're going to keep on throwing more money at it. I do not smoke. I know people think that I do because my eyes uh, are always like kind of squinty and my face is red or something like that. But people have been saying that to me since high school. Bye, Fubo. That was not me saying that. That was one of you guys saying that. Is SBE a price or a buy at this price? If you're looking long-term, it is. If you're looking short-term, I think it's risky to invest in companies that are up 300% if you're looking short-term. Uh, Ace the Man, when is Neo Day? I'm curious. I don't, I don't, uh, I haven't been keeping up with Neo as much as other people. I see like some YouTubers just posting on Neo like once a day, twice a day. <laughs> Uh, and I have not kept up on it that much. Thoughts on Fast, Fastly or Square? Uh, so I've looked into Fastly a little bit, but not recently. I know some people that invest in it are very bullish on it, but um, I haven't looked in a while. Have I looked into Fitbit with Google buying them out? No. So that would be interesting. That would be... Uh, an interesting uh, little bit of competition for Apple. Is Fubo still a buy? If you're looking long term, it is. If you're looking short term, it might not be. Baba Fett series coming soon. Nice. Uh, BFT, I think, good long term. J 
January 9th is okay, Neo Day. Interesting. I'll have to maybe I'll live stream that one on the main channel or something like that. Uh I I'd, I'd be curious. I I own Neo but not very much cuz I bought and it went up like 20% the day after I bought. So it was already up a lot. Um I almost I think I bought more maybe once, but I don't have a large position by any means. I think what is it? It's less I think it's less than 1% of my portfolio. Um, just because I I just bought it to keep track of it kind of and because I had a dip and then I bought like a few hundred dollars worth and then it went up so much. And I was like, eh, I see some other specs I want to buy. <laughs> Tattooed Chef. Yeah, I love it. I, I like Tattooed Chef. Uh, right after I did a video on it, like my first video, then Financial Education made another video on it. Meet Kevin made another video on it. And I think that honestly pushes the price up. I know some people, like a lot of people have strong opinions, whether that's definitely a thing or whether like YouTubers can't push stocks up. But I think some of the big YouTubers definitely can, especially some that have a lot of like a lot of people watching them or a lot of money behind um, with their subscribers. A lot of people like that watch financial education have a lot of money. So yeah, I think that definitely pushed it up a little bit. And we're luckily up about 30% because of that or something like that. Do I like Square or Shopify? Maybe long term, but they're pretty expensive now. I was pre-med. What else am I doing other than investing? So, Stefan, uh, I was a retail personal banker. I also own a personal training business. My dad and I own it. Uh, I also have a couple other businesses that do decently. Like they, they do really well per hour, but I don't have much work in them. Um, I've talked about all of them, I think on the channel, but, uh, right now my main thing is YouTube and investing. Uh, that's why I do 60 hours a week. I've not, heard, I've not looked into TPGY or X or EX box or EV box. Sorry. Charge point competitor. Interesting. Ooh, Jar Jar Binks is going to come on Disney. Interesting. Wait, are you kidding? I don't know. Is MP material still a buy at this point? Do you see a 10X in two years? I don't know if I'd see a 10X in two years. Um, I mean, that's a lot. I mean, Tesla's up 10X in one year and everyone talks about it all the time. It's one of the biggest companies out there. Uh, so 10X in two years, that might be a little bit high, but I still think if you're looking long-term, uh, I think MP materials is a, is a good company to hold long-term. Javier saying, yeah, YouTubers pump the price up after they buy. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Um, I know some people are like, are thinking that they're going to like get in trouble for it. Like YouTube, a lot of people think YouTubers could get uh, sued by the SEC or like something like that. But I don't know if that will happen. I think maybe if they were pumping it up and then selling it, like they buy it, make a video on it and sell it the next day and they constantly do that, then it could be a problem. But I think most of them just hold it long-term. I mean, they have so much money anyways, right? Uh, like meet Kevin in uh, financial education, Jeremy, make so much money, they don't need to sell off their stocks. They can just buy stocks that they think are going to be a good long-term, make a video on it, make more money from the video, make more money from the stock going up, uh, put more money into the stock. It's a, it's a good thing. Malad, you still have, or you bought a small tattoo chef position. You're wondering if it's a good time to average up. Honestly, yeah, I think it is. Um, I still plan on buying it at the price it is now. I think it's going to be a good long term hold. Um, definitely one that I'm still planning on buying more. A. Garcia wants to know how much I bench. <laughs> uh, well, without any gyms open in my state, it's kind of hard to bench. So it's a lot of dumbbell bench. Um, at my max, I think was 265 or something like that. I only weigh 180 pounds though. Should you wait for a pullback on Tattooed Chef? Uh, I'm not going to. I'm just going to buy it when I have the money in my account to buy it in my solo 401k. Okay, Ian's kidding. Uh what do I think about Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is an interesting one for me. I was saying this earlier on in the stream. I don't invest in Bitcoin. 
just because, I don't know, I like to invest in companies or things that make me money instead of something that is a store of value. But again, like if you guys want, there's a link down below to BlockFi. I plan on investing in stablecoin and they pay 8.6% in that. And then I just invested in CleanSpark. So if you haven't seen my video on my main channel, CleanSpark just bought a Bitcoin mining company, which I'm going to make sense of in my head as a play on Bitcoin because they might make 10 based on what they did last week because they like issued a press release for how much Bitcoin they mined. They're going to add $10 million in revenue, 10 to $12 million in revenue because of their Bitcoin mining. So I'm going to use that as like a play on Bitcoin. <clears throat> Best long-term growth stocks, Disney. JPM isn't really a long-term growth stock, but I still think it could double. Um, three favorite penny stocks. I don't really keep up with penny stocks too much. I like Planet 13. They're not considered a penny stock anymore. They're like five and a half dollars though. I own Tesla. Is it a buy? If you're looking long-term, sure. If you're worried about valuation, it is way more expensive than uh, most people think it should be. But it continues to go up. I still like it long-term because I think it's more than just an electric car company, but you're taking some risk with it, right? It, it's up a lot. I know a lot of people that feel very strongly about it, but it's very expensive. <clears throat> what do I think about the sandwich stock market? I don't know what you're talking about. Have I looked into solo? I know some people were telling me to look at it, but I have not looked into it really. I think I did for like a day, then just went past it. Uh, what do I think about Neo or XPEV? So a lot of the, with a lot of these EV companies, I feel like there's just so many of them that are getting so much money right now. I'm not really trying to invest more in EVs. Now I'll invest in other parts of the, other parts of the sector. So not EVs, but like other companies and uh, other companies that these EVs need to use like rare earth materials, like charging, like um, the grid company that I talked about earlier, clean spark. I'll invest in those, but there's so much money in the EV market. I'm not trying to put more money into it um, unless I see there's like a great opportunity. Who's my favorite SPAC owner? Uh, probably Chamath. Yeah. He's probably mine too. I think Foley has a couple. Chamath has a couple. Um, Bill Ackman just has the one, and then I'm I'm missing one right now. Uh, who is that? There's someone else that's had a couple too. I can't remember off the top of my head though. Um, oh, uh, Richard Branson. That's what I'm trying to think of. What's my price target for MP materials? It's so hard to tell because you're banking on the fact that rare earth material costs are going to go up. I think it's going to be hard to give an exact price target. Palantir you bought last week. So I've looked at Palantir, but honestly, even after researching the company, I have no idea how I would know if they're doing well or poorly, except for the fact that they're either getting or not getting contracts. Like they're, they're big data, right? They're, they're trying to form connections for different organizations. I have no, I have no access to their products and I have no access to know if their product is good besides the fact that they're getting contracts. So I just didn't feel comfortable with it because I don't like, I can't keep tabs on it unless I just hear that they're getting contracts. So I'm kind of like, you're just looking at the surface level, but you're not being able to see inside what's happening compared to like Apple. They come out with a new iPhone. You can go test out the iPhone. You can see reviews on the iPhone. Uh, it's pretty easy to tell. Do I think it's still a good time to buy CLSK? Yes. I will probably buy more. Um, the thing is, it is up a lot. It's up a ton. Right? It's up probably 800% so far this year. But uh, I still think it has room to grow. What do I think about Walgreen Boots Alliance? Uh, or yeah, do I think it will go up? Possibly. I almost bought it because it was $34 a share. Now I think it's 40-ish. Uh, I almost bought it, but I didn't. So lost out on that one. Who did I open my solo 401k with? Fidelity. I already have a lot of money at Fidelity, so I just opened it up there too. Yeah, so do I stand by my decision to sell APXT? So I haven't looked at APXT to see where it is now. Let's take a look. So yeah, I still stand by my um, 
opinion, not that the price would really change my opinion. I forgot where I sold it at. I want to say I sold it higher than it is now, but I could be wrong. I thought I sold it for like, yeah, somewhere around where it is now, I think. Um, I still stand by it. There's just, I didn't have a lot of money in it. And I had too many SPACs that uh, were just small positions. I didn't want to keep all of them. And yeah, APXT looks good. But also, it's another thing like Palantir. I don't know when APXT is doing well. Uh, I, I can't really understand their system because I can't see it. But yeah, I hope they do well. Do I think JP Morgan and Disney, but they're not paying it right now. I think they'll bring it back though. JMIA, uh, I've looked into it, but it had been up so much. It was like a couple of weeks ago when I looked into it. Um, I believe they're the African e-commerce website or a company. Um, probably a good good one to invest in. I haven't looked at their prices though, so I don't know if it's good at the current price or not. I have not heard about uh, a van stack. Would I jump in closer to the merger? Uh, to, I'm assuming to APXT, probably not, just because I don't, like I said, I can't really tell when they're doing things well or poorly, um, just because I, I can't access the product. Uh, any thoughts on PIC? So I did a video on them really early on. Like I think it was the day of or the day after they announced that they were going to do their SPAC. And I think at that point, like SPACs were super early on. I think I had maybe talked about one or two before that. And now I saw they were up, they were up big today. I think like what, 20% or something like that. Um, so I don't know. I haven't looked at them too much since then. What's my thought on GIC and Flux Power? I haven't looked at Flux Power. GIC, I think I've done a video on, but again, uh, I just look at so many companies. It's hard to remember if I'm not buying the company, what I think about it. I've not looked at SDGR. What's happening with Longview? It looks like it's just trading sideways until the merger. Uh, I sold my RMG along with my APXT Moss. Uh, if you guys want to know what I buy and sell, it's in the Patreon. But a lot of the time, I don't like. I update YouTube when I buy stuff, but a lot of the time, I make the videos when I'm still considering whether or not to buy it, um, and then I buy it afterwards or I sell it. And like, I just don't really like to do the selling videos as much. People don't like them. People hate when I say that I'm selling a stock. So. Uh, unless I see like a big warning sign, a lot of the time I'm selling stocks just because like I have a small position. It went up 20, 30% in a day or two. And then it's just not worth me. I don't think that the stock's worth buying at the current price. So then I just sell out my position. And I'm up 20 or 30%. Then I move it to something that I like more. What about IPFC? So I sold that. I held it for a little bit, but um, I don't know if I like it long-term. I don't know which spec is going to merge with SoFi, but all these fintech companies are blowing up like Webull, Robinhood, SoFi. They're getting a ton of users and take, I think they're taking a lot of the new investors, especially with like all the extra stimulus and all the extra unemployment pay and stuff. People are investing that haven't invested before. And I think older people are too with these younger platforms because they're offering some stuff that older platforms won't. Is MP risky because of lockdown in the UK? Uh, I wouldn't think so. I would assume that they're considered uh, like that they're essential, but I don't know. Theo, I don't know what that is. Um, what other questions do you guys have? Uh, just because I need to get off here in a second. I actually have to go to the bank. Um, but before we go with the last questions, again, if you guys don't mind hitting the like button, I appreciate that. Um, trying to grow this channel a little bit more since it's the second channel. And two, if you guys want to check out BlockFi, there's that link down below to get 8.6% interest. And there's a link to Weeble if you haven't gotten that already. Just got to throw it out there. Uh, do I think Vale is a good stock to hold long-term? Haven't looked into it. CRISPR, I actually talked about that earlier. I like what they're doing. Uh, have I heard of NGAC? Yes. I, I think I've made a video on it before and I own it. Or at least I did. I think I still do. Yeah, I think XPEV could be a dominant player. What do I think of QELL? So I own it. Um, I've made a video about it before. I have not looked into MT. Um, why has a SPAC blown 
up so much lately just because I think people are realizing that you can get a really good return and there's limited downside before the merger happens. CRISPR Therapeutics, I uh, just talked about that a little while ago. I like what they're doing. I do not use Twitter. So I have like a personal Twitter from years ago, but I really don't use it. Sloth, I'm glad that you like it. Thanks. Greetings, Eric. Appreciate it. Uh, a lot of people from where I am now, like uh, a lot of my region here in Michigan are Dutch. So that's, that's cool to see people from the Netherlands. Virgin Galactic, risky, but I'm holding on to it. Uh, you don't see a video on NGAC. I might not, I might not put it in the title. Uh, yeah. So I apologize for that. If I haven't, um, I'm pretty sure I talked about it at some point though. Do I think there'll be a crash in 2021? Um, possibly, but I'm not trying to sell out because if there is a crash, I'm just going to shovel more money into the market. Just like last year, a lot of people were worried. I was not trying to sell out or time it or anything like that. It's too easy to miss it. I mean, the, like the, the V recovery was so quick last year. I'm not going to try to time anything. I'm just going to throw a lot of money at it. thoughts on IDEX all hype. Um, I looked at it, but uh, there were, there was some news about them like paying YouTubers at one point to do reviews, which pushed the stock up a lot. Um, so I think that was part of why it went up. But after I heard that, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I can trust what's happening with uh, the stock price. Do I see Virgin Hyperloop merging with VGAC? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, with how long I've been streaming, <laughs> I might be repeating. But uh, what do you think about the overall market after the new COVID? Oh, so I haven't talked about this yet. I saw that news this morning. Uh, obviously it had a big effect on the market. I was expecting the market to be up today because of the fact that we had stimulus talks that were positive. Thing is though, I'm not trying to time it. I don't think it's smart to try to get out because of the new COVID. I mean, diseases in general evolve and they're harder to, uh, to squash kind of like flu, right? You can get the flu vaccine, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to get the flu or a flu shot. You can get that, but you might still get the flu. So I'm still investing. Yeah, the, cra uh, the crash this year, man, so many missed opportunities. Yeah, so that's one of those things like after you've been through something like this and I've never been through a crash that was a long extended crash, I'll be honest. So I might be jaded, but I'm gonna, like I thought about this this year. I'm not trying to be selfish by waiting for it to, or yeah, selfish, I guess, I don't know, um, or greedy trying to let it fall down to 50% down instead of 40%. Like I'm just gonna invest if it goes down, I'm going to throw more money at it. If it falls down, I'm going to throw more money at it. I kind of tiered it off. So it was like, if it dropped 5%, I was going to invest this much. Then at the end, I was going to invest a ton if it fell down like 60% or something like that. So I put a lot of money in the market. I could put more in, but you know, I, I made a good amount. I have not looked in WWE stock. Um, hi, Mexico ball. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this. I appreciate it. If you guys don't mind, Hit the like button and check out those links. I appreciate it. Thank you guys again. Uh, I, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that too. I plan on doing more videos like this. Again, it just doesn't mess up the algorithm like the main channel does if I do a live stream there. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.